Hi, Spring fans. Welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. Uh, in today's very quick installment, we're going to take a look at the uh, new Spring Security Kotlin DSL. Uh, it's just nice. It's a very nice DSL. The Spring Security team have been doing some uh, amazing work, I would say, uh, since 3.0. So Spring Security, we're, at, we're now at 5.2, uh, looking forward to uh, 5.3, uh, but it's come a long way since 3.0, the, the, the major release. And um, I think a lot of the work that's been done there has been making Spring Security more approachable from a Java perspective. And so uh, we had uh, XML, there's reams and reams of XML uh, at first when a CG came out and then Spring Security got more concise thanks to the introduction of uh, schema and Spring Framework itself. Uh, and then uh, we had a Java DSL in 4.0. Um, it was uh, really nice. It's 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 a fluid DSL. It it uh, you know you could do just about everything. It was a little confusing. Um, I would say from for me at least, I I find it a little overwhelming. But that's just because Spring Security itself can be a little overwhelming. Over time, uh, that DSL that and Spring Security in general uh, has done more and more for you. So now the surface area of most of my security applications is you know a few Spring Boot configurations for OAuth or uh, like properties just for OAuth or if I'm doing a, a hard-coded username and password kind of demo it's just one bean for authentication and another another one for authorization and that's it right and we're talking like 10 lines of whatever be it Java code or properties or whatever so you know while I love Spring Security um, what I really love about it is how concise it is now it is so so accessible and they still haven't stopped there, right? They're not, they're not, they're not ones to, to rest on their laurels. And so in the recent release in 5.2, they released a uh, modified, or maybe it's 5.1, I, I, who knows? Uh, it's been um, fairly recently. They released a, uh, a Java DSL. They, they modified the Java DSL. So it still works as before. You can still use the old DSL, nothing changes. But now, instead of chaining, uh, operations or modifiers off of fluid API calls, uh, as you did before. Now you have lambdas, right? There's a, uh, a context that's given to you and you can, in the, in the lambda, you can use the context to, to configure things. So it becomes easier to nest. You can say, okay, this belongs inside of that. Uh, and it becomes easier. You don't have to use indentation, uh, to kind of see what belongs to what, what modifies what, right? It's now very clear. The DSL kind of guides you to uh, the finish line. Um, and I like this new DSL, and uh, I thought that was a, a big improvement because now it's very clear. Okay, if I want to modify this, I do so inside of this. This is what I'm doing, right? I don't have to like try and figure out which indentation meant what. Um, now they've gone even further. Now they've gone even further in uh, introducing a Kotlin DSL, and that's what I want to show you today. I, I I love any chance I can get to play with Kotlin, uh, so uh, I was very excited to see this DSL. We're going to go ahead and build a new application. We're going to use the latest and greatest version of Spring Boots, uh, and I'm going to use, and I'm going to use a, uh, you know, just the defaults here for Kotlin. I'm going to use Kotlin Security. Uh, we're going to bring in. A, we're going to just, we're just going to bring a build, build a regular web application. Uh, we're going to use Spring Security, and I guess that's it. I I can't. I, I don't really know what else to add. I guess that's enough for now. Let's just build an app. Uh, we'll go ahead and build a new app using our zip file, open this up in the IDE. Okay. All right, so here's our application. And we want to create an endpoint, right? So the uh, first thing to do there is to create a, uh, a uh, functional endpoint i can do it with the uh i can create a um controller if i want to but i like using the dsl since we're in kotlin land we might as well uh here we go simple http endpoint like so greetings and our job is to send in a server response so what i want to do is i want to send a response but i need to have the current authenticated uh, user. So I'm going to unpack it from the request. I'll say request dot 
uh, printable. Okay, there's that. Uh, dot uh, map, it dot name. And from there, I want to map that into a response. So I'll say uh, server response dot okay. And by the way, I'm not using the reactive APIs here. This is just the functional API that is now as part of as part of Spring MVC. It looks very similar and is indeed almost identical to the functional reactive API that we've used uh, on plenty of different occasions on this very uh, show. Uh, so we're going to build a endpoint here. Okay, so we want a body and map of and just create an endpoint. I'm just going to create a, a JSON endpoint that says hello it, right? It is an implicit variable in Kotlin. Uh, it, it's the current variable of this, this Lambda. What I have here is an optional though. So I need to pr produce a, an alternative value if nothing is there. I'll just say server response dot bad request dot build. Okay. Good stuff. So there we are. There's my uh, HTTP endpoint. It's going to take the current authenticated user and produce a hello name, you know, from the current user. Otherwise, it'll return a bad result. Um, now, that's pretty straightforward. Of course, I've uh, kind of elided over the most important bit, which is where does this thing come from? Where does the principle come from? We need Spring Security for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to configure Spring Security as I would normally. So I'll create a class at enable web security class um, security uh, Kotlin security configuration web security config adapter. Okay. And all I want to do is I want to override the HTTP configuration. So I'll say HTTP uh, and uh, configure that. We'll say um, we're going to use HTTP, and with that, I'm going to create, I'm going to enable HTTP basic, right? So let's see. HTTP basic. Right, I know. There we go. It should be basic, okay. Uh, I don't need to customize that. And then authorize requests and authorize. I want to authorize the endpoint called greetings, right? So let's say greetings. And I want that endpoint and anything below it to have a particular authority, right? So role admin. And otherwise, I want everything else to be wide open, permit all. So there's a, a inbuilt variable in the context there. And that's it, that's the Kotlin DSL. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it, just, it just feels much nicer, it's very clean, very uh, uh, easy to, to use. Obviously I need a, um, a uh, I need usernames and passwords. Uh, and so, you know, th thus far I've used beans. You know, we can take this a step further um, and we can add initializers, add some beans bean, uh, and instead of doing this here as a separate Java config style bean, I can just add it inline. So there's that. And I need another bean for the usernames and passwords. So I'm going to create an in-memory user details manager, and now I need some users. And to build those users, I'll just create a little anonymous function that I only need to make this cookie cutter work a little easier, right? So user string pw string uh, var arg. Uh, I guess I want some. I want some roles, right? So roles string, and it'll just be a convenient uh, thing with default password. Blah blah blah. Oops, default password. Username user password password roles roles dot build okay there we are now let's build some users uh first of all 
I want to be a user uh, of the uh, DSL, so I'm going to be one user, and I will have access to just the user authority. Uh, I'll build another user, the good Rob Winch, lead of Spring Security, one of my all-time favorite human beings. Uh, he would have a, a, a he would definitely first of all not do plain text passwords, and second of all not have a bad password. But hey, let's uh, we'll give him a one. Still a bad password. Um, and uh, he gets to be both a user and an admin. Okay. So there's our endpoint. Uh, and now, you know, we've actually added these users to the system here. And what did I do here? Did I have a, I want to, um, oh, so you have to unpack it. All right, there you go. So that's a little weird. I'm still, sometimes I forget about that part in Kotlin. Uh, let's see. Um, I think we're it. I think we have everything, actually. Sometimes, I mean, look at it. It's just a... It's, it's a, it's, what is that, 50 lines of code? I mean, gorgeous. What a nice, nice application. I've got a web and web application with a username and password based database uh, and a, uh, I've got security. I've got a secure endpoint. So let's run this and see what we get. So remember, according to these rules, whoever is role admin is allowed to access the system. So Rob Winch has admin privileges, uh, whereas I am a, um, uh, merely a user, okay? So I won't be able to access this greetings endpoint, and uh, that makes me sad. curl minus u r winch pw1 http localhost8080 forward slash greetings. Okay, that worked. Let's try me with my terrible password. And I'll do minus v to see the output of the headers. First of all, you can see the, the JSON itself was forbidden, so I'm not allowed. I got a 403 header uh, status code, so, you know, not authorized, right? Um, so that works. Our security is in place. Uh, it's it's a nice DSL. It worked, you know, it looks very familiar if you've ever used it before. And you're opting in. I love how, like, I want to opt in to HTTP Basic. Great, I opt in. I want to use, uh, I want to configure certain authorized uh, exchanges. Great, I can do that, right? So. The uh, uh, I think this really, really has come together quite nicely. The um, support for building security into your application gets easier and easier and easier. And it just works more sensibly out of the box with every release. And I think this just really speaks to that. This is a nice, very nice, very uh, Kotlin-esque uh, DSL. Super grateful um, for the team focusing on not just having our, our proverbial backs covered, right? Uh, they always do that. They always make sure our applications are secure and that comes first, but they're also making it easy so that you have no reason to hesitate when you want to introduce security into an application uh, today. And, that, and that's, a, I think, really uh, a compelling thing, right? It's it's hard. Security is hard. It, it, it's it's one thing to, to address security. It's quite another to make it look easy or at least make it feel like it's easy, like you're not... Uh, <laughs> toiling for no reason. So thank you, Spring Security team. This is super cool. I can't wait to see uh, this DSL go further. And uh, uh, as usual, Spring fans, I hope you got something out of this video. Hope you liked it. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time.